Welcome to our seventh and final installment of our SAM 101 Lightning course. Today we're going to review some of the characteristics of a successful SAM program. So we can break this down into three key areas of an effective ITAM program. We have people, we have process, and we have technology. So we need to make sure that we have the right people in place, that they know what they're going to do, that they have the proper executive sponsorship, and that uh, you know we've aligned uh, the, the proper organizational structure to get things done. We also need to have process in place, right? We need to make sure that we have policies, we have governance, that we're aligned with uh, whatever our business processes may be, that our SAM function falls in line with that. And finally, we need to make sure that we have the right technology. There's a whole lot of, of software asset management technology that exists. There's software discovery tools. We have uh, uh, software purchasing tools. We've got software, what else? Software recognition. There's a lot going on here in terms of the technology space, and we need to make sure that we're adequately equipped to manage that. So, for example, if we have technology and we have the process well, guess what? If we don't have the people, then we really can't be, uh, you know, we don't have that, the right scalability or efficiency, right? If we have technology, we, maybe we don't have technology, but we have the right people. Well, that's hard because we can't automate, right? So we need to make sure that we have all of these perfectly aligned the best we can to create a sustainable and a consistent and scalable ITAM program. So let's talk a little bit more about the various stakeholders that a SAM function interacts with in an organization. Now, this is an example, but there are, perhaps are many others that your specific business may have. So largely and almost always, a software asset management, if it's going to be worth anything, is going to interact and have a good relationship with procurement, right? <laughs> We've talked about software entitlement and why it's so important. Software procurement is incredibly important input into an effective SAM program. Security is also a big one, right? In terms of talking about end-of-life software or other vulnerabilities or other compromised software, it's important that SAM and security be aligned. We also have individual product owners, right? It could be a SQL Server or Oracle database product owner. It could be a desktop application product owner. It could be, a, in the case of cloud, we have cloud centers of excellence or our cloud management group. There are so many different organizations that are affected by software. And as such, it's important that we can delineate and have an operational team that we have stakeholders involved from each group such that a SAM service can have that kind of the nuts and bolts group, right, that's making things happen. And lastly, but definitely not least, it's important, as I mentioned earlier, that we have executive sponsorship. And that's really where we have a cross-functional group of senior leadership from an organization. When we say senior, we're talking about people that can enforce or, or create or implement policy or that have final decision-making uh, approval, right? A yes or a no for various things that a software asset management program may be interacting with. And so when we think about all of this and we put them together, the key takeaway here is that software asset management does not work in a vacuum. <laughs> it, it is not a disparate or siloed group. It needs to be Continue, continually in tune with what is going on with the business from all these different groups. That's right. And because you're working with all these different groups, whether it be procurement or security or product management, they all report to different leadership. And so it's, it could be difficult to understand who is doing what as you execute on different software asset management tasks. And so the best way we have found to execute together is to create a RACI or a Responsible, Accountable, Consulted, and Informed chart, right, R-A-C-I. And this chart can have different tasks that uh, the SAM function might be leading or, or spearheading, but each group would have a different uh, R-A-C-I responsibility, basically, to, uh, to, to execute there. So we might have someone who's accountable uh, in one, but then the other groups are maybe consulted or informed about what's happening with that task. Otherwise, without a chart like this, it's very difficult to get anything done, we have found. So an example, if you look on this visual here, these are just example uh, of work streams that we've come up with. But if you look at, like, number five, provide demand forecast to procurement. Oftentimes, we have found with clients that somehow the SAM service, that falls to them, and they're... The SAM team has no idea 
what is going to be demanded by the business in the in future, the future yeah. right? Mm-hmm. I, we know how software is licensed. We don't know what the, what, what's going to happen in the future. That should come from product management or enterprise architecture or the strategy who's determining what the go-forward business is. And so they would be uh, you know, accountable for that one. Uh, also, we've got you know, maintain complete and accurate entitlement records. Sometimes this is a sticking point. Is that procurement or is that SAM? It depends on your organization. And so coming up with this racy chart can go a long way in building this organizational team uh, and, and having them work together and coordinate to accomplish great value for the SAM program. So with that, we thank you so much for attending this section of the SAM 101 Lightning Course and grateful uh, for all of the Lightning Courses you've attended today. And if you have any questions uh, on this or anything in the future, please reach out to us at anglepoint.com. Thank you.